Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about diffusion and effusion, uh, two different ways that gases move throughout a room, okay? So first one is diffusion, okay? So when things diffuse, that's probably more ter a term that you're probably pretty familiar with. Um, with this one, we're talking about dispersion of particles from areas of high to low concentration. So um, underline or circle this word concentration because when we talk about effusion next, it's going to be a difference of pressure. So diffusion talks about concentrations. Okay. Now this is your classic like you know home cooked uh, cookies kind of deal or coffee in the morning kind of deal, perfumes those kind of things. Um, if you uh, you know make coffee in the morning, if you're two or three rooms away, eventually you'll smell the coffee. And the reason why is because over time that smell is concentrated by the coffee pot, but it diffuses throughout the room. Okay. Same thing for stink bombs or farts or whatever you want to talk about. Really is what is what diffusion kind of happens. Okay. A stopwatch is. So if we take a look at this little video, it kind of shows that this process is actually fairly slow even though the particles are moving at very fast speeds because of all the collisions, it doesn't happen very quickly. So here you go. Started at the same moment as a few drops of liquid bromine are placed in the bottom of a test tube containing air at atmospheric pressure. The bromine rapidly evaporates at room temperature. The reddish brown bromine molecules diffuse up the tube. Although the bromine molecules are moving at speeds of several hundred meters per second, their constant collision with nitrogen and oxygen molecules of the air cause them to constantly change direction so that their overall movement up the tube is rather slow. Thus, after two minutes, they are only about halfway up the test tube. It actually takes over three minutes for the bromine molecules to diffuse up to the clamp near the top of the test tube. Okay, so as you can see, they mentioned that they're moving at several hundred meters per second, but because of the collisions, uh, it's actually a pretty slow process. Now, obviously, different gases diffuse at different speeds, and that's where we're going to be heading to uh, in this video. Um, so here's coming out a couple of visuals for you guys. You have bromine vapor here, air vapor here, closed off scenario. If you open that up, the higher concentration of air will go over here, the high concentration of bromine will go over there, and eventually through time, they'll be equal between the two things. Same idea here, if you take a look at, you know, chamber A versus chamber B, um, if you can imagine this is a picture at some point in time in the chambers, Initially, chamber A was, you know, a concentration of one, or it was complete, all ch chamber A, and nothing was in chamber B in terms of whatever this gas particle was. As soon as we open this gate between the two chambers, as the concentration of A goes down, as it diffuses into B, the concentration of those gases in B would come up. At some point, they're going to reach an equilibrium and stay the same in here, okay? This picture here probably is right about here or so. We definitely have more particles in A than we have in B, so they're probably about at this point right here as they kind of diffuse into each other. Okay? Now, if you talk about effusion, effusion <clears throat> is similar to diffusion, but the difference is we have um, a passing gas usually through a small opening, and we have high to low pressure. Okay? So if you think about that, um, if you pop a tire, that's effusion. Okay? So you put a hole in your tire, and the gas escapes like that. Um, if you pop a balloon, it's effusion, but that small opening usually tears pretty big and happens pretty quickly. Okay? So here's a little video clip on effusion. Again, they've slowed this down many times. You can actually can see the process happening. Effusion is the process of gaseous atoms flowing into a vacuum through a hole in a container. The rate of effusion of gas molecules at constant temperature and pressure is inversely proportional to the square root of the molecular weight of the gas. Okay, so he talked about in the, that little end of the clip there that it's proportional to the square root of the molecular weight of the gas. So we're actually going to see that equation. Okay. Um, here's a couple of little clips. We're not going to show them the entire in their entirety, but here's a couple of clips of a fusion and kind of things happening in the former Metrodome. So these are ones I pulled offline a, a year or two ago. <laughs> So 
they're being effused out. So here's now the other shot of that as the people come out the door. You kind of, you almost can see the wind that they're being they're experiencing. So this was not a windy day. It was actually the, the air being blown through this small opening as they open up those security doors because of the differences in pressure there between those two things. Okay, so now when we compare the two things, either diffusion or effusion, okay, um, we get this uh, movement of gas at different speeds. Okay, so if you're in class, there will be a demonstration for you that you can see. If not, here's a little video of it. Diffusion is the process whereby molecules of gas move to completely occupy a space, giving a uniform partial pressure. In this example, gaseous ammonia and hydrogen chloride diffuse through air from either end of a sealed tube. When the two gases meet, a precipitation reaction occurs, forming ammonium chloride. The mass of the hydrogen chloride molecules relative to those of ammonia is greater. Thus, hydrogen chloride molecules travel more slowly. All right, so we see that because the, um, the, hydrogen chloride, the hydrogen chloride is heavier, it moves slower, where the ammonia is lighter, so it moves faster. So they're not going to meet in the middle. They're going to meet further down the tube towards where the hydrogen uh, chloride gas is at for this one. Okay? okay, so that brings us to Graham's Law. So Graham's Law tells us that the rate of effusion or diffusion is inversely proportional to the square root of the gas's molar mass. Okay? So if we go back to this kinetic energy idea, kinetic energy is one-half mass times velocity squared. So in that equation for kinetic energy, we have mass, but we have velocity squared. So when you start to compare rates of movement or rates of effusion or diffusion, you need to do a square root of those things to end up canceling out that velocity that is squared. Okay. So what we say is if two substances have the same average kinetic energy, the more massive particle must move slower. Okay, so it kind of goes down to it. Now, we're assuming that these two substances are going to be the same temperature because if they're in the same room, in the same situation, same environment, they'll be at the same temperature, which means they have the same average kinetic energy. So that means the heavy one moves slow and the lighter one moves faster. Okay, so here's our equation. You take the rate, or the speed, essentially, of substance A divided by the rate of substance B, that will equal the square root of the molar mass of B divided by the square root of the molar mass of A. Notice how A is in the numerator here and A is in the denominator here because it's inversely proportional, so they're inverted of each other as you look at that e the equation. Okay, So let's take a look at a, pro a practice problem.